Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church, with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. God will do a new thing in you. God will do a new thing in you. Whatever you ask for, whatever you pray for, it won't be denied, saith the Lord. Oh, God will do a new thing in you. God will do a new thing in you whatever you ask for whatever you pray for it won't be Denied, oh, it won't be denied. Yes, oh, it won't be denied. Save the Father, we bless your name tonight. We thank you, Lord, for our time together in your word. Consecrate me, O God, to your service. By the power of your grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and may my will be lost in thine. We pray, O God, that you will allow me to preach your word in such a way that will come alive as your people listen, sitting within the doors of their tents, yearning to hear your voice. Lord, I pray that you will communicate to all of us in a way that we can understand and appreciate what it is that you are saying through your spirit to the church. And God, I thank you in advance for all that you're going to do, and I promise that I will praise and honor and glorify your name. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my dear friends. Thank you for tuning in tonight. If you could take a moment before we get to the text and share this broadcast on your social media platforms, let's do our very best to get the word out tonight. You know that we are doing a series entitled Making the Adjustment. Tonight I want to invite your attention to the book of Genesis chapter 6. We're going to consider verses 9 through 22. And since the passage is longer, perhaps the sermon will be shorter. 
Genesis chapter 9, excuse me, chapter 6, beginning at verse 9. From the New Living Translation of the Bible, the scripture reads this way. It says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. And then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. But I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. And so Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. Amen. Thus ends the reading of the word of God. This third installment in this Making the Adjustment sermon series, I wanted to entitle it this way, I'm Building Something. I'm Building Something. Well, my friends, favor made the difference. In a climate of corruption, in an atmosphere that was filled with divine anger, where violence appeared to have the victory and evil seemed to have the upper hand, the Bible says that it was Noah who found favor with God. May I tell you tonight that Noah found favor with God because God found faithfulness in him. You've heard me say so often that although favor is not fair, it is also not first. So many times we want the favor of God upon our lives, and yet sometimes we are lacking when it comes to you and I being faithful to God. But if you, like Noah, want to have the favor of God upon your life, there must be a life of faithfulness that precedes the favor of God. What God has done is that he has honored Noah's integrity. He has honored the fact that Noah cherished his intimacy with God. And as a result, he has now upon his life this unique and uncommon favor. But can I hasten to tell you quickly tonight that this unique and uncommon favor that is upon Noah's life, it demands from him an uncompromising commitment to do the will of God. If Noah's life was a sandwich, then the two pieces of bread would be his faithfulness and the bologna in between would be the favor of God. I know some of y'all wondering why I say bologna. Maybe you want to say peanut butter and jelly, but I happen to like bologna sandwiches. And so if Noah's life was a sandwich, 
On one end, there is his faithfulness. On the other end, there is faithfulness. But in the middle is the favor of God. And this is what we see tonight in the text. We see that Noah was faithful to God. The scriptures describe him as the only blameless or righteous person who was living at that time. Can you imagine it? That out of all the people on the planet, God looks and at, at the world that he created, and he can only find one person that he can trust. That's what the text says. And can I tell you tonight that as the text reveals, because of the favor that was upon his life, Noah could not continue with business and usual, as usual. The favor of God upon his life simply means, listen to me, that Noah is God's choice. He has been chosen by God to be a part of something, listen, that will be excruciating, although exciting, and yet it is essential all at the same time. God has chosen Noah to do something that has never been done before. God has chosen Noah to do something for which he has no point of reference. And the funny thing is, child of God, the thing that God has chosen Noah for, his creativity is not needed. His innovation is not expected. The only thing required of him is obedience. And can I tell you that if Noah should employ his obedience, uh, the result will be creative and innovative. Here's the deal, child of God. This is what I want to get to. If, if Noah is going to continue to have the favor of God rests upon his life. It is, it is required of him to not only be faithfully obedient, but also to build something as well. You see, sometimes the manifestation of the blessing is in the building. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes the manifestation of the blessing is in the building. I said it once before, too many people only want to be blessed and not enough people want to make the adjustment to do the building that is required after they have been blessed. Here it is. The Bible is clear. The Bible says that the Lord is angry with the conditions of, uh, that are, that, that's on the earth. He is upset with how his creation is living. He says, the Bible says, that there was violence. There was corruption. And, and the Bible says that the Lord observed this. It put the Lord in such a state of anger that he made a sovereign decision to wipe all of them out along with the earth itself. It's verse 14. It's interesting. He makes this decision, doesn't call Noah into conference about the, the decision that he has made. There is a big gap between verse 13 and verse 14 of Genesis chapter 6 because in verse 14 we simply hear now God uh, telling Noah, amen, what he is to build. I'm going to say it one more time, child of God, amen. He's telling Noah what to build. He gives him clear instructions on how to build it. May I hasten very quickly tonight and tell you, don't frustrate the favor of God upon your life with a failure to follow instructions. I'm going to say that one more time. I said, do not frustrate the favor of God that is upon your life with a failure to follow instructions. The Lord is very explicit. He is absolutely clear in the text. He gives, amen, Noah, what he is to do. And I want to tell you, child of God, you and I have got to make that adjustment to build. Like Noah, we got to build, number one, because we were instructed. Let me say that one more time. We have to build because we were instructed to do so. Please understand that the building of this ark was not Noah's idea. This was not some concept that he came up with on his own. Can I tell you that the ark was God's idea? And if God has an idea, God also has instructions. If he wants to involve us in what God wants to do, God will give us the instructions. I'm going to say it one more time. 
Don't frustrate the favor of God upon your life with a failure to follow instructions. Amen. Like Noah tonight, we are called to build because we were instructed, but we're also called to build according to the instructions. Well, one of the things that we learn, or two things I should say, that we learn in the text tonight is that materials are material. Let me say that one more time. I said materials are material. Amen. In other words, can I tell you uh, what you use, amen, to build the thing that God wants you to build is of critical importance. Amen. You can't use your own material and expect to manifest in your life the thing, come on, that God has declared. Amen. If you're going to see in your life what God is saying to you, you're going to have to understand that the materials that you use are material. Also, I need to tell you tonight that success can be found in both size and structure. The Bible says that the Lord tells Noah, amen, not only what to use, amen, in building, but he told Noah how big to build. And I'm telling you, child of God, that in this case, success can only be found in both size and structure. Really, what's happening for Noah, as I, as I turn the corner tonight, what's happening for Noah tonight and what may be happening for somebody who's listening tonight, that in this season, you're going to have to make an adjustment. Amen. In fact, you are adjusting to divine favor. The favor of God is upon your life, and I'm telling you, that when the favor of God rests upon you, it demands that you make some adjustments in your life. I tell people this all the time, that this is how I sort of packaged, amen, my own call to the ministry as a way of helping me to understand the different stages of that process. I knew the Lord had called me. I accepted the fact that the Lord had called me into ministry. I never denied that fact. I knew that it was the Lord. I knew it wasn't me. As much as I tried to play crazy at the beginning, I knew that the Lord had spoken clearly to me. And I accepted that fact. I knew that somewhere in my life, down the line, didn't know when, that I, I would be doing what I'm doing now. I accepted the call to, to, to ministry. <clears throat> I tried to articulate it. Amen. Didn't really get the answer that I wanted to get. But I, deep down inside, I had no reservations. I had no resistance. I just didn't know how to make that happen. But then secondly, in addition to the uh, 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 acceptance of my call, there was a moment, amen, perhaps five years later in my life where I actually acknowledged or verbally acknowledged to others that I had been called, a public announcement as it were. But then can I tell you that after accepting and acknowledging, I have spent a lifetime of adjusting to the call of God upon my life. And I'm telling you, child of God, when you have divine favor resting upon your life, amen, it requires that you make an adjustment. And so in the first instance, please understand that Noah, amen, in building this ark is adjusting to the divine favor that rests upon his life. What, what I'm trying to tell you is, amen, could someone else have done it? I'm not sure. All I know is that God chose Noah to do it. And God, uh, Noah was God's only choice. There was nobody else that is mentioned in Scripture. In fact, he is pulled out and placed, amen, in a space uh, uh, that is not alongside others in his day. The Bible says that he stood in God's eyes. He stood out. He stood above heads and shoulders above everybody else. And I'm telling you, child of God, he has upon him divine favor. And, and in God's eyes, what God wants done, Noah is the one to do it. And I'm going to tell you again that when you have that kind of favor resting upon your life, it means you have to make an adjustment. But Noah's not only adjusting to divine favor, he's also adjusting to the fact that he's going to have to start over. Let me say that once and ever again. That when you have divine favor on your life, there's going to come a moment, amen, or there's going to be a line of demarcation that's going to be drawn in the sand. Amen. You're going to have a before and after experience. Amen. When you have the favor of God upon your life, not only is it, a, is it an adjustment to that favor, it's also the kind of adjustment 
that demands that you start over. And I need to help somebody with this tonight because there are so many persons, amen, who frustrate the favor of God upon their life because they're unwilling to do what it takes in order to start over. There comes a time when the Lord says what you've known, that's no longer going to exist. The paradigm of the past, I wish I had a witness here, amen, is going to be done away with. You're going to have to adopt new paradigms. You're going to have to adjust to a new process. You're going to have to go down a brand new path. And the question is, can you handle the favor of God that is on your life? Because it's going to require, in a very real sense, amen, that you're going to have to start your life over again. <clears throat> Listen to what God tells Noah in the text. He says, now once you construct what I've told you to construct, amen, according to my instructions, he said, I want you to make sure that you grab, uh, take your family, take your children and their families and the animals that I've told you, amen, I want, and the birds, I want all of y'all to get in that structure, get in that ark. And I'm telling you, listen, he says, because I'm going to destroy the earth, amen, and because you're in the ark, you will be saved. Now, please understand, amen, that whoever you saw before you went in, you ain't going to see them when you come out. God, I feel like preaching tonight. I said, whoever was around you, come on, those familiar faces, all of your social connections, amen, please understand, amen, that when you come out of the ark, come on, they will no longer be in your life, amen, beside your family and the family of your children. Uh, please understand, Noah, amen, that if there's anybody else, any other personality upon whom you was leaning on, uh, on them like they were props, amen, please understand you'll no longer have, amen, those persons in your life. And you've got to be willing, child of God, if you're going to keep the divine favor of God upon your life, you're going to have to make the adjustment to start over. We don't like talking about that. Amen. We, because to start over means, amen, and not only is something new beginning, but it also means that something old has ended. And people don't want to deal with that. Amen. That sometimes, amen, life is filled with seasons and stages. You are not supposed to be in the same place, amen, uh, uh, as you were all the time. In fact, child of God, please understand, amen, that you're going to wake up one day and realize, amen, that you're not going to end up how you started out. You're not going to end up with the people that you started out with. You're not going to end up with the same experiences that you started out with, amen. As a matter of fact, amen, there in Acts chapter 27, amen, is a, is a a wonderful story there, amen, when the apostle Paul, amen, gets caught in a shipwreck with others, and the Bible says, amen, that the word of the Lord told him, amen, to tell everybody else, don't worry about it, amen, everybody is going to be saved, and when the ship, amen, hit the rocks, and it began to break into pieces, the instructions were, amen, those who can swim, jump out now and, and swim to shore. And those who cannot grab a piece of the ship, I can't get nobody to talk to me, amen, and make it into shore. And the truth of the matter is, child of God, that some of us, because of the divine favor that is upon our lives, we're going to make it, but we're going to make it on broken pieces. Child of God, you're not going to, listen, I'm telling you, what you come in on ain't going to be what you started out on. I'm telling you, child of God, of God, you got to be willing, amen, to make that adjustment and start over. Can I tell you there are three points of emphasis, and then I'm going to shut this little sermon down, amen, but I need to tell you, child of God, we are called in this hour because of the divine favor of God that rests upon our lives. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we are called, child of God, to build something. And I know you all don't want to hear that. Amen. I know you think I'm talking about buildings. Amen. I'm not really talking about buildings, but amen. I could also say I ain't just talking about buildings, but I'm really not talking about that. I'm really talking about whatever it is that God is calling us to. Amen. In the midst of where we are. Amen. To an to experience, amen, a reality of life beyond the one that we're in. Can I tell you that if we're going to get there, we're going to have to build. I wish y'all would hear me tonight. Listen, you're going to have to build. You have the favor of God upon your life. You can say whatever you want to say, amen, about the climate that we're in, but the truth of the matter is it hasn't changed the fact that we're still blessed. And I'm telling you, that 
blessing of God demands that those of us who are blessed, amen, start building. It's not going to happen uh, for you tonight, amen, <clears throat> by happenstance. It's not going to happen. I wish I had a witness. It's simply because the Lord is going to just blow some miracle into your life out of the sky. No, amen. If you want this next move of God in your life, you're going to have to be willing to build something. I can't get nobody to help me here. Amen. You want everybody to do it for you. And I don't blame you. Amen. Because that's the kind of preaching that we have heard for too long. Amen. Coming across the pulpits in our churches. We have been made to believe. Amen. That miracles are going to manifest themselves out of thin air. But I'm here to tell you, child of God, you got to have the faith to obey God. And you're going to have to have the faith to build whatever God tells you to build. Let me tell you, child of God, as I close tonight. Can I tell you, I've made up my mind, amen. As a matter of fact, the more I began, amen, to scan and scour, amen, this text tonight, amen, I said to myself, boy, you're going to have to build some. I know you're 61 years old. You don't feel like building nothing, but I hear the Lord telling me you still got to build, amen. As long as my favor rests upon your life, you're going to have to be in the process of building something. Can I tell you, child of God, I've made up my mind tonight that like Noah, I'm going Going to build something using divine favor as my foundation. <laughs> I said, I'm going to build something using the divine favor that is upon my life as my foundation. Amen. I'm going to build my confidence knowing that I have been chosen by God. And knowing that I have been chosen by God, amen, I also understand that he didn't have to choose me and that I didn't deserve to be the Lord's choice, but he chose me anyway. And because I have this uncommon and unique favor of God upon my life. Amen. I've made up my mind. I'm going to build something. And so I want to tell you, child of God, you got to do the same. You got to decide tonight, amen, that I'm going to build something. Amen. Excuse me. I'm going to build it using the divine favor of God that is upon my life. Here's the idea, child of God. Amen. You couldn't build it if you didn't have favor. But because you have favor, you got to build it. You got to use, come on, divine favor as your foundation as you build it tonight. Secondly, I need to tell you, child of God, that not only am I building something using divine favor as my foundation, I'm also building something that will advance the agenda of God. I'm not trying to build my own kingdom tonight. I'm trying to build something that will advance the agenda of God. Do you hear me tonight? I said, you got to build something, not, not selfishly build something. You got to build something, child of God. Amen. Not those things, amen, that uh, capture your self-interest. You got to build that thing that will advance the agenda of God. Amen. God has made a decision tonight, amen, to destroy the earth and everybody in it except Noah and his family and the animals that are and the birds that are in the ark. All right, God has made that decision. I wish I had a witness here. That's the agenda of God. I might not even like what God is planning to do. But can you, child of God, amen, because of the divine favor that is placed on your life, will you build something, amen, that will advance, come on, the agenda of God? It is interesting, again, my friends. So many of us want that blessing. We want that divine favor. We want the Lord, amen, to be caught up with, with whatever it is that you and I are interested in. And the, and the truth of the matter is, child of God, that a whole lot of that stuff that you and I are interested in, I, I, I would dare say God didn't even think about that thing. He's not even thinking about that stuff. God has another agenda. Sometimes the agenda of God Amen. It's not to our liking. You do know, amen, that his ways are not like our ways. You do know that his thoughts are not like our thoughts. The question is tonight, amen, will you build something tonight, amen, that will advance, that will promote and push forward the agenda of God? I'm telling you, I'm building something like Noah tonight using divine favor as my foundation. I'm building something that will advance the agenda of God. 
but I'm also building something tonight that is essential to the salvation of myself and my family. I wish so would help me tonight. Can I tell you, child of God, that the Bible says that God told Noah, said, listen, make sure y'all get in there, shut the door, amen, and you stay there. I wish I had a witness here. And can I tell you that once they got in there, the Bible says, amen, that the rain began to fall from heaven. And the fact that they were safely in the ark, amen, was the reason why, amen, Noah and his family were saved. I got to tell you, child of God, you got to build something that is essential to your own salvation and to the salvation of your family. Here's what I'm trying to get as I close tonight, child of God. The only way out of this, come on, is to build your way out. Let me try one more time. I said the only way out of this, come on, what God has sovereignly decided to do, amen, you're going to have to build your way out of it. And I want to encourage somebody tonight to make that adjustment. Come on. Amen. Learn a lesson from your bishop tonight. And don't be so lazy all the time. Amen. Come on. Ask God to give you whatever energy you need. Amen. So that you can build your way. I wish I had a witness here into the next season of your life. I'm here to tell you, child of God, what we need now in the kingdom of God are some builders. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. We got enough praisers to last us until the Lord returns. But can I ask you tonight, amen, that when, amen, the benediction has been pronounced, come on, when the praise service has come to a conclusion, amen, can we count on you as a praiser to also be a builder? Let me try it one more time and tell you tonight, amen, I know that we love Amen. To worship God. Our problem is we don't understand that work and worship are synonymous. Amen. You can't worship God and not work for God. Amen. If you're truly a worshiper, come on. If you're truly a person like Noah who cherishes your intimacy with God, you know, amen, that your intimacy with God, amen, requires that you also follow the instructions of God. And so as I get out of here tonight, I got to tell you, child of God, all of us got to sit down somewhere amen in a seat of solitude for a space amen and just ask ourselves am i building anything for the kingdom i wish i had a am i the kind of person amen that whenever amen the lord is present do i always be the one that's soaking up what's in the atmosphere amen and never building anything never giving of myself amen to the thing that the lord has called me to well i don't know about y'all child of god but i've made up my mind that i'm gonna build something and I can't even tell you all together what it is now. But I tell you, if the Lord give me instructions, I'm going to follow the Lord's instructions. God, I wish I had time to preach this like I feel. But let me close a little homily and tell, amen, some of y'all who may not be familiar, amen, with how, amen, the Lord blessed us to come over to 2223 South Crater Road. Can I tell you, child of God, the only reason why we're in this building is not because because we were special. We're not in this building, amen, because we're the only church that God loved. We're in this building, child of God, amen, because of a people that was willing to be faithful and follow instructions. When I tell you tonight, child of God, earlier in the message, make sure you don't frustrate the favor of God upon your life with a failure to follow instructions. Can I tell you I'm not pointing my finger of condemnation in your face but I'm testifying out of my own life experience I'm, I'm trying to help you to understand what really happened amen in our own journey and in my life we were over there at 515 Virginia Avenue and the Lord spoke in my spirit just as clear and said, why don't you lead the congregation into buying an existing building and renovating it, amen, for a worship space, amen, before the Lord could hardly get the statement out of God's mouth, I responded, I wish I had a witness here, amen, in rebellion, I said, Lord, they not going to go for that, because it's going to take us out of the delectable height section of the city, 
and the members of the congregation have a sentimental attachment to the area. Now, can I tell you, child of God, that that was not a fact. That was only my assumption. But can I tell you that your assumption can become fact to you if you're the one that's believing it. And for two holy years, I knew we had divine favor, but it was frustrated because of my disobedience. We were buying up property after property. Amen. And looked like the more we tried to buy, the more the city told us, more land the city told us we needed to have. I never will forget, I went down to, to the city hall and asked for a variance on parking. We had to build a retention pond, they said, and it was going to take up 25 parking spaces. In addition to the retention pond, we had to build a connector on the ground. Amen. That would extend on the ground. Amen. The length of three city blocks. I wish I had a witness here. This was going to add cost to the project. And I asked Amen to get a variance. And they told me no. And I was angry as I drove away from City Hall. I came up the road here to Crater, uh, uh, up here, uh, uh, came up Crater Road as I always do. And I was coming up, amen, to get me something to eat from the restaurant down the street. I passed by this building, looked like almost every day. Yep. Amen. And never paid any attention to it. But I got there at the light. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Had McDonald's on my left side. Yeah, where the food line is now. Amen. On my right side. And I looked up at the building and it had a sign. Yes, that said that it was for sale. And my attention was captured by the sign. And I heard the Lord say, he said, why won't you do what I said? I wish I had time. Can I tell y'all the rest is history? Amen. Because when you follow, amen, the instructions of the Lord, amen, that divine favor that is upon your life will cause miracles to manifest before your face. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. Can I tell you about when the money won't write? I said, God, fix that. Y'all ain't talking to me. Can I tell you that what one was a building being sold for 1.8 million dollars we bought it for 175,000 God put us right where we are God saved us and put us in a position where we can be secure not only in this generation but in for generations to come come on find you somebody and tell yourself tell them say neighbor I made up my mind I'm building something for the kingdom of God. I'm building something for the glory of his name. I said, I'm building something on a foundation of divine favor. I'm building something. Have I got a witness? Amen. That when all the dust has been settled and cleared. Amen. When all the work has been done. Yes, I can hear the voice of the Lord saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up higher now. I'm going to make you rule over many. Come on, find your somebody. If you can't find nobody, tell yourself, self, we getting ready to be. Yes. I said, we getting ready to be. Yes. We getting ready to be. We going to lay a foundation. We going to be careful how we build on it. At the end of the day, whatever we build is going to cause a praise to come forth from those who witness what God has done. The kind of praise that will redound to the glory of his name. Yes! Hallelujah, yes. Why are you building? I'm building. I'm working. Because when I think of what the Lord has already done for me, I owe him whatever effort I can. I 
owe him my obedience. I owe him to at least follow his explicit instructions. Yes, I wish I had somebody that could lift their hands and say, here they are, Lord. I give my hands, I give my heart, I give my mind, I give all of me to you. Use me to build something for your glory. Yes, yes, Lord, use me in your service. Use me till you use me up. Use me until many everywhere will see, yes, the character of my life and say, there goes a child of God. I got to get y'all out of here. Didn't mean to keep y'all this long, but I feel happy in my soul. Can I leave y'all tonight and tell you that not with my natural eye, because all I see is the camera in front of me. I see a wall behind me. I see a clock on the wall. But in my spiritual eye, yes, I got a revelation for the people of God who are living with divine favor resting upon them. I have not seen ears have not heard it has yet to enter in to the hearts of men what God has in store somebody ought to bless God tonight because he's getting ready to use you to put something together God help me here y'all know my son I only got one son. He's my favorite son. Yes, he's my son. In whom I'm well pleased. He's a grown man now. With a family of his own. But as a child, he gonna get me for this. He loved playing with Legos. Legos was everywhere. All around our house, there was a Lego to be found. We couldn't go into the store anywhere. he go right down down the aisle where the Legos were. He said, I want more Legos. I said, you already got enough Legos. He said, but I want some more Legos. What you need more Legos for? He said, I'm building something. God, I wish I had somebody here. And we have Legos everywhere. He sit in the middle of the floor. Legos all around his little feet. And he would begin to put something together. Something that was on the box. Something, sometimes something of his own creation. But he took the scattered pieces of Legos laying on the floor. And by the time he was done, there was something that he made. God, I feel like preaching here. Can I tell you the Lord's going to take Amen. The scattered fragments of your life. He's going to anoint it with divine favor. He's going to put in your mind. Yes, creativity. He's going to give you, yeah, the instructions. And if you do what the Lord says, he's going to use your life to build something. Amen. That will be to his glory. And that will be to his honor. Oh, I feel this in my soul tonight. I wish I had the vocabulary to really communicate to you tonight just how I really feel. I'm building something. And I need to stress this before I get out of here. We're getting ready to go. Because we got our own agendas. You know we do. We have our ideas. We have our ambitions. We have our desires. And we spend all of our energy trying to build a life for ourselves and we never build anything for the Lord. And we want the Lord to bless us with all that we need to build the life that we want. It's time to change that. It's time to decide, this is, I'm going to build something that will advance the agenda of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You hear me? 
and all these things shall be added unto you. What did you say? Elijah, Elijah said, make me a little cake first. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Put God first. And God will see to it. You'll be tied over until times get better. He'll bless you, hallelujah, with a supply that won't run out until the coming again of rain. Are you hearing me tonight? I'm building something. What about you tonight? Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Help us, Lord, to make that adjustment. Make that adjustment. To make that adjustment, Lord. You are moving in the earth in a way that we don't fully understand. And though it makes us uncomfortable, Lord, and though it is inconvenient for us, Lord, teach us to make the adjustments so that we can continue to make progress, to be fruitful in this hour. Lord, I pray for that soul tonight who's sitting around waiting for something to happen. They say they want to be involved, but they don't want to get invested. I pray for that soul tonight, Lord, who says they want to participate, but they never follow the plan. I pray, Lord, tonight that they'll make that adjustment and say, you know what, I, I'm just going to take confidence. I'm going to take pleasure. Simply in the fact of knowing that what I'm building, I'm building for the glory of God. Hallelujah. And if I can spend the balance of my days doing that, I know everything is going to be all right. The Lord will take care of me. Hallelujah. Whatever it is that's needed in my life, the Lord will provide. I'm going to trust the Lord's provision, trust the Lord's appropriation, and I'm going to give all of my time and energy to obediently follow the Lord's instructions. I'm going to do what the Lord tells me. I can't wait and ask the Lord to do something else before I do something. I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do, and I'm going to leave the rest in the hands of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's what Noah did. He did what... God told him to do, and he left the rest in God's hands. Lord, may we receive this word tonight. Every single one of us, do what we've been told to do and leave the rest in the hands of God. We pray this prayer now. All the things of which we have asked, we do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen thank the Lord. Thank you again for tuning in on the Wednesday night. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on um, Sunday morning. I do want to take a moment to thank all of you who volunteered today um, for our first feeding. Thank you. Thank you so much for your participation. Those of you who could not participate, we thank you for your prayers. Amen. We, we're going to continue to do what we can as the Holy Spirit guides, we're not trying to do it all. We're not even trying to do some. We just want to do that which the Lord has told us to do. And we thank you, Lord, for help. Thank you, uh, Good Shepherd and friends, for helping us uh, fulfill what we believe is our mandate from the Lord. And so, again, thank you. We're going to be back at it next month. So if, we, if you hear us begging, uh, please answer that clarion call and come over to Macedonia and help us. God bless you. You guys have a great night. And again, we look forward to seeing you on the weekend.